next guest is the pride of Hofstra. He's a proud Sable High School graduate. He's been the coach at Sable High School for several decades. That's Gary Pesco. How are you, coach? Several decades. I'm doing well, Michael. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You Good to see you, Pesco. The 90s. Se yeah, it's 90s. Several would be 77 decades. No, several. You got the several. You got the 90s, <laughs> 2000s. I could have made an argument for four decades, coach. You're getting up there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that I'm here to remind Mike because he was about to wear uh, a Rocky Point t-shirt <laughs> with, with you uh, coming on. I said, Mike, will you have some cooth, please, and change your, your shirt? So um, you know, just want to pat myself on the back there. Listen, I'm a proud Golden Flash alum, and I'm, you know, I've been waiting for this shirt. This, this particular one at special meeting, Coach and I will get into it. So, Coach, look, you've been around. Look, we have so many things to talk about, right? So, you you know, you, you've been involved in Suffolk County wrestling since, I don't want to make you feel too old, I believe, since 1979. You were, you know, a, a four-plus-year starter at Sable, right? You went on to Hofstra and did really big things at Hofstra. Graduated high school in 83, graduated in 87, 88, depending on how we count that last year, right? And then you basically took only one year off, and you've been at Sable, you know, ever since, right? So, you and I have talked about this off air. I'm sure there's a couple of people, but really – from a, not only from a contiguous standpoint, but from an aggregate in terms of number of years, you've been involved in Suffolk County wrestling since 1979. How does that make you feel? Pretty freaking old. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a long run. I never, you know, until you brought it up and I'm thinking how long it's been, I don't really try not to think about it too much. I just take one year at a time and, and still enjoying what I'm doing. So um, when you put it that way, you know, 40 something years, I must be pretty friggin' old, huh? <laughs> yeah, look, you look, look young. You do look young. He always, you know, Gary, we call him Gary Gorgeous in, in, the, in the greater Sable area. Gorgeous Gary. Look, coach, <laughs> we can read off all your records. I think you are one of the most underrated. Mike T and I were talking about this. I mean, you have well over 200 wins. You're, you know, certainly in the, in the, in the top 15 in terms of all times win lists of all the coaches in, in Suffolk. You've had, you know, multi five or six county champions. You've had, double digits in terms of uh, county finals. You have multiple state wrestlers. You have multiple wrestlers go on to division one, but you know, but not what, what I'm most, you know, when I think of you coach is you're a great human being and a great person. I know that sometimes, you know, you and I, maybe that, that might be a little surprising here for me. Um, we had our fun over the years, but look, coach, you're, you're a great person. This, this interview means a lot to me. Um, and I appreciate your time. What I want to talk to you about is, you know, well, I might, might I might I add that you you've also coached over a period of time having to deal with Mike Petrato yeah. as your assistant. So yeah. I don't know what type of green jacket you get for that, but I know that's a special Billy jacket. It's a special jacket. <laughs> I, I, I know that Billy OC is getting a, a special award at the end of this season yeah. for uh deal with, with, with Mike. So and you, kudos to you for that. Yeah. Yes, for me also. I know. Mostly 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 yeah. My, Mike did come on uh you know at a down year, a little rebuilding year, came in and uh, volunteered his time and and uh, you know at first he was uh, you know sitting back feeling it out and then uh, you know then he started getting comfortable and and he fit right in he was gung ho 100 percent taking kids to off season tournaments and you know yep. getting kids back on the mat so uh, he was a big big help back then at the time and you know how many years Mike did we spend. I, I, don't know, I don't know, over a decade, but look, this is not about me. I want, this is about you coaching. And, and I appreciate that Mike for you bringing that up. But so look, you, you, you know, uh, I want to talk about one thing. And I know Mike has a, a bunch of questions too, is we talked about old joke inside from 1979, right? You graduated in 83, you went on to wrestle at, at Hofstra. I think they were the flying Dutchman back then. Now they're the pride. And then you've been at the helm at Sable the whole time. Right. What, when you talk about the 70s and 80s and 90s and all the way through today, what's the biggest thing from when, you know, you were lacing them up as a, as a lightweight at the, you know, uh, Sable Christmas tournament in 1979-80 versus today? What's the biggest thing you see different in terms of wrestling in Suffolk County? Um, it definitely, there is, a, there's a, a, an elite level. Uh, the kids that wrestle all year round, uh, there's, a, there's clubs now. There were no clubs back then. Um, you know, the, the club we went to, it wasn't a club. We just went over to Sacha and Mr. Yazo took me and him over there two, three nights a week and work out with Joe Davison and, uh, Billy Stark and a gang were over there. And that's where we, you know, that's where we really learned how to wrestle in the off season. So, you know, 
the now there's like you know there's clubs in Nassau, there's a few in, in Suffolk, and uh, these kids are going all year round. And you have a, a high elite level wrestler, and then you have kids that are multiple sport, and then you have kids that kind of like just wrestle in season. So there's a big jump between um, the, the levels. That's what I'm seeing these days, you know. And that 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 happened more so in the last, I would say, ten years. So one of the things that um, you know I, I like about you, we spent a lot of time together. We went to Fargo, and I think that we, you know created a special bond. I mean, we definitely kicked the snot out of, I think it was 19 or 21 games in a row at the, at the Bison. <laughs> oh. At the Cornhole, you guys kicked butt. That was pretty For the bad. Cornhole, that was unbelievable. <laughs> that re- that was a good run. And then we all, was... we also had to take uh, 12 uh, Long Island kids back home on a flight that didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, somehow I, I went on a different flight with Front Off and I. You well, know, you've reminded me of that many times. Yeah, yeah, you guys left us behind with the 12 kids because you all had to get back to work on Monday. One. <laughs> so, uh, Coach Pesco, we spent a lot of time together. Um, I think that we, you know, we had a, a, a trip from uh, – it wasn't holy hell. It was, it was one of the better trips of, of my life, but we, we definitely missed a flight that wasn't there. We had to go train planes and automobiles. I think we won 19 or 21 games in a row in, um, in at the Bison Turf in uh, uh, Cornhole. Yeah, that's right. It was a great time. Uh, speak a little bit about, um, you know, you've been around for so long. It's hard to, to do one thing over and over again. Talk about the benefit of freestyle and Greco-Roman Olympic style wrestling. And, you know, what that's done as far as keeping longevity and the fun in your wrestling career, your coaching career, and um, where that, where we are in the State of the Union right now on Long Island, um, where you see it, it going is, I hear that things are slowed down. Um, are we going to start seeing more of that? Do you think that it's important to do more of that? Uh, 100% important to do more of that. I, I think that's where you... Uh, you get the real fundamentals on how to how to position, how to tie, how to finish shots. I mean, in freestyle, if you're not finishing your shots, you're getting scored on. You know, you can get tech fall if you're not sitting on a single, right? So, uh, Greco Roman's all about positioning. You know, you, uh, Coach DeMeo said, uh, you know, everything you do in Greco, you can do in freestyle, you can do in folk style. So, except for throw a guy on his head. So, you know, I think it's extremely important that the kids get a, a feel to become a more well-rounded wrestler. And um, for me, that was that was what we did. And there, there weren't folk style tournaments in the off season. It was just freestyle. And I, I enjoyed it because it was a different feel. It was a little more relaxed, a, a, you know, more athleticism involved in, in freestyle. And um, I think we need more of it. You know, I think the folk style tournaments, uh, kids are doing that because they feel se- secure in that. They're not they're not certain about freestyle Greco. They don't want to try it out. You know, so when I open my room up, I'm, I tell them uh, if you want, because I need a break from folk style. Mm-hmm. You know, you need a break. Um, yep. For me, uh, you know, I learned that I went to one of those tournaments where they did a, Gre- a folk style round uh, or two rounds of freestyle and a Greco. Or it was freestyle, Greco, and then folk style. When they got to the folk style round, it was like a guy's just throwing legs in. It was a minute period and they just riding each other out. It was boring as heck, right? So, for me, I needed that change of pace, fast pace, freestyle, kids are throwing, getting tied up, learning how to throw up a body, positioning Greco. Um, I tell my kids that if, if you want to go to folk style tournaments, go right ahead, but by all means, go to get as much mad time as possible, but I'm only going to the freestyle tournament. So, mm-hmm. Coach, you know, uh, just in, in knowing you, I, I know that a lot of your fondest memories were solely in folk style, but in, in, in freestyle traveling around. I mean, I, I think that one of the keys to your success at Sable was, you know, you literally took kids all over the country in, in what we call a silver bullet, you know, that, that van and, and, you know, was it a 14 passenger van all, all, all over the country, right? Do you, do you think that how much of a, a role and, you know, just kind of piggybacks off what Mike said, how much of a role to creating that, that kind of team and bonding experience is made in the off season? Obviously with COVID and, and the last, we'll call it year or so, um, it's hurt, right? But, you know, when you think back of uh, uh, some of those teams that you had, even in, in your, you know, your, your days as a wrestler with, with Yazoo and others, how much of that do you draw on from kind of the, the off-season and travel that translates into, you know, in-season success? Uh, it's certainly a, a, a bonding to kids are traveling to tournaments, spend, spending time in hotels. You know, they, they goof around at night, whatever they do. You know, so they're bonding. And, 
uh, and they're bonding with each other, and then they get to bond with me a little bit on the travel portion, you know. And then, and, and you know, when you see a kid all year round, and you're in their corner, you get to know them a little bit. You get to really get one on one with, you know, where they need to get to to get to the next level and the things they need to work on. So I think that's important. Um, as far as when, you know, when we were young, I just remember getting in. I never wrestled a Greco tournament in my life at tenth grader, and I'm. Mr. Yazos drops us off with Mr. Stark and uh, Neil Duncan, and we get in his van with, you know, Wayne Kate and Glenn Lanham, Billy Stark. Uh, you know, there was there was 15 of us, or I should say 12 of us in there, packed in, driving to North Carolina for the Northeast Greco Regional Tournament. And uh, it was just a, what an experience, you know. You, and then you look back on all these big names that we were traveling with, and and you wonder why they were so good because they were putting their time in. They would travel and doing all this fun stuff, you know. That's something I'll never forget. So I try to get that back to the kids a little bit. You know, when we, when Mike and I were working together, we had kids from other towns coming and working out in the room, and they were traveling with us too. So we were taking kids uh, from other towns with us as well, which is great for our kids. They get to know more kids in the county. I mean, that's what it was. You know, you, you know, Mike Torriero, you know, you know, traveling with all those kids. How many kids do you know throughout the state? Oh, no, no. I mean, I, I, I believe that it was, um, you know, the largest reason that I that I loved wrestling. I mean, growing the network and, um, you know, uh, seeing uh, other parts of the state, how other people lived. Uh, I know for me, the best that I saw in my hometown, Rocky Point, and, you know, talk about Sayville and, and kind of what you guys have over there. I mean, Sayville is Mayberry. It's the it's the most beautiful little town on Long Island. You know, I I, I I claim Rocky Point and Sound Beach is, but um, you know, Sayville really is a, a special, unique place to to grow up and live. You guys have everything that you could you could want o over there. Um, and you know, coming from Rocky Point, the best I knew was being a teacher. Uh, that was the the wealthiest people in our district. If I could walk out of my parents' house, and wrestling allowed me to be able to go and see and experience uh, a lot more than that. And uh, Coach Pesco, from my perspective, um, you know, knowing the athletes that wrestled at Sayville under you, the time that I was fortunate enough to spend with you, it seems like you 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 constantly bring in a, a real life perspective to your student athletes. Um, it's not just about wrestling; it it is uh, a vehicle. But you know, the destination isn't winning at, at the end of the road. It's it's much bigger things. Can you talk a little bit about um, you know the best piece of advice that you've been given? Uh, or the best piece of advice that you, that you go to provide, uh, your life mantra, just kind of something that you, that you instill in others that you've been, that's been instilled uh, from maybe the coaches that you've had? Well, I, I definitely take it to the, the life preparation, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to inspire for greatness. You know, so you get a kid, and we talk about it on a daily basis, like, you know, this isn't just, you know, work hard, mentally tough, be prepared, all this stuff. And I said, it's not just for wrestling, it's for you in life. You know, you want to get do well on a math test or, or I always bring up, you get a job someday and you come in late tw twice, guess what? There's no more job. You know, you get, maybe you have to do a little uh, cleanup when you come in late to, to practice, you know, some fun stuff we do. And, and um, but then it's more about the real world when you leave here, you know, make them better, better men when they walk out the door. You want the best of high school wrestling? Long Island Wrestling Association's website brings you the best. Wrestling is one of the toughest blue collar sports. The sport has tens of thousands of followers and at the center of it all is the Long Island Wrestling Association, measuring the gravity of the sport. In 2002, National Hall of Fame wrestling inductee Steve Meehan created the number one source for wrestling news in New York State. With contributors like Long Island Sports Hall of Fame inductee and historian Andy Slauson, the site is the most comprehensive wrestling website in the country for high school wrestling news. With in-depth analysis, entertaining facts, forums, and trending topics, this site has a treasure trove of historic high school wrestling information with records dating back to the 1930s. There is no better source for high school wrestling coverage. Long Island Wrestling Association, keeping the wrestling world up to speed. You know, and you, like you said, wrestling is a great vehicle for that because it, it's really everything you learn in wrestling is, 
every lesson you need to know for, to prepare for life. It's just, we all know it. That's why we love the sport so much. Coach, and look, um, yeah, look, I, I, I view you as a, a treasure trove of information in terms of you know, your historical context. And, and you've literally seen multiple decades. I won't put the number. I don't make you feel old. But, you know, a couple of topics I want to talk about is one is is weight cutting. Right. What you know, the, the kind of there's been a change. Right. Certainly in your day, in my day, in Mike's day and now the kind of certification process. What's your take on weight cutting? We'll call it in, in your day versus today and the, and the advent of the weight certification process. What's your, what's your take on that? Well, I mean, back in the day, it was just there were no rules. It was the Wild West. You do whatever the heck you wanted to cut weight. Right. And um, yeah, obviously it was dangerous. I mean, most of us survived through it and made us uh, built our character. And I think that it's, it kind of hurts the sport. You know, when we have a bad name, when you talk about trying to get kids out for the football team, you know, from the football team, the football coach, I don't want them losing weight. Like, I don't want them to lose weight. I want them to gain weight. We need big kids, you know, and they don't, they, the kids don't get that concept, you know? So I think that that was back then. And uh, I think it's a, Losing weight was a, an important part of the whole process, and it built character. You learn how to make sacrifices, and you learn a lot about yourself when you're suffering, right? Um, so, you know, I think some kids miss out on that now, but I also think it's better for the sport that they not have to worry about their weight so much. And, again, I see that it's that elite level that are really – that are looking to go on to the next level in college and they're the ones losing the weight when they need to. But then again, you see some of these kids these days that are so good. They're not worried about their weight. They're wrestling what their, what their natural weight is in there and they're really killing it, you know? So there's two things you can see about that, you know, going down so low, if you go too far, it could hurt you as opposed to staying out and being healthy and maybe just a couple drop, a, you know, a few pounds here and there just to get to a weight that you're comfortable at. So there's a balance there for sure, but it's definitely changed over the, over the time, you know, some for the good, some, some for the better, for sure. Uh, what, was the, Go ahead. what was the, what was the, um, you know, the, the biggest weight cut that you had as an athlete, um, you know, and when <laughs> know was it, this one. <laughs> and when, when was it as a coach, because the wrestling did change over time, when was it that you just said, you know what, um, we're not going to do this anymore? Was it when you first started to coach or was there a, a period in your early career that you were doing it and, um, you know, something happened or just uh, the time? Uh, for me personally, I mean, I, I always cut weight starting in ninth grade. You know, it just was I got brought up in ninth grade. Yazo couldn't get certified at 98. I was weighing 112. I was skinny little. Marink, you know, nothing. And um, I'm like, coach, I'll, I'll go down to 98. And I just did it, you know. So every year I was dropping like 12 pounds and I really was a skinny kid to begin with. But that, that was no problem. I didn't mind that. When I got to college was, was insane. Like, I, again, it was – we didn't have a 118-pounder. I'm weighing 142 pounds, 90% body fat. And, coach, I'll, I'll go down to 18 because I couldn't – Joey Downey would – Having his, you know, wipe me up across the mat, did whatever he wanted. You know, I couldn't touch him with a temper pole. He was a senior and obviously a very talented athlete. Um, so I went down to 18 because I want to be a starter. And that was, a, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. I lost all my muscle tissue. Uh, you know, at the end of the season, I was a little pot belly and skinny again, no muscles. So it was uh, – <laughs> It was uh, it was pretty tough, you know. When you dehydrate yourself for more than you know forty eight hours, it, it really takes its toll on your body. So not, not healthy. So for me as a coach, I, I try to make if the kid wants to lose weight, I'm not going to tell the kid to lose weight if they want to lose it, or I'll suggest that you're going to be better at this weight, maybe maybe five pounds or whatever it may be. And if a kid really wants to cut a lot of weight, then I'll work with them on it. But it's going to be healthy. It's not going to be dangerous. You know, Coach, you talked about stigmas and, and, and weight cutting. We could certainly talk about the, the wrestling and football dynamic. What about, you know, skin infections and, 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 and all the different ailments that come from wrestling? You know, look, that we've how many times have we all heard all the different things that is a potential black mark on, on our sport? How, how do you, how do you uh, tell your wrestlers and the sharky wrestlers and parents to, to 
be, you know, have proper, have proper hygiene and be, you know, be clean and, and be safe, right? Because, let, you know, it's no secret that some of the uh, ailments and infections and all those different things from wrestling could be bad. So what do you tell your wrestlers? Look, you've been doing this a long time. I've, again, I consider you an expert. What do you tell the wrestlers and parents to, to uh, practice proper hygiene? Well, I mean, every, every year, before, right before the season, I have a parent meeting and I hand out stuff about hygiene and we talk about the, the protocol and how we're proactive. You know, I tell them that the, the custodians clean the mats after practice. I clean them before practice. Um, you know, I don't take chances in case anyone's in there. And, you know, we talk about, you know, clean clothes every day, showering right after practice, or if you can't, then as soon as you get home, no, no, uh, stopping and doing homework or eating, you go right in the shower. So, um, I think wrestling, we get a bad name, but a bad rap on it, but I think we're more proactive than any other sport out there. You know, when this whole COVID thing came up and we're talking about how we're going to, you know, how we're going to run a practice and what we're going to do to make sure everything's safe. And, and I'm talking to my athletic director and he says, I know you guys are, you guys are way ahead of the game in, in hygiene and, and being proactive with it. So, you know, that conversation with him was, you know, was good to hear because we are as wrestling coaches and athletes, we are way ahead of the game as far as being on top of hygiene and keeping things clean. So, um, I think it's important that you do that and you keep it to a minimum. As far as infections go, most of the thing we see these days is ringworm, you know, and that's a minor fungus. It's like athlete's foot. So it's not, uh, it's not dangerous. So other than that, I really haven't seen anything serious in a long time, long time. So coach, look, you know, the, the other thing I want to talk to you about is, again, I could pick your brain is <clears throat> we had, we had coach Frank Papalizio on about a week or so ago. And I know that um, Frank Papalizio was a huge proponent of the New York state dual meet championship. I know that you brought five or six or seven rep number of teams to the UE duels, which was the unofficial dual meet state championship. What's your feeling on, you know, the, the sectional dual meet tournament, the New York state dual meet tournament. I know there's been a number of votes and it's not always unanimous, right? What's your feeling on, on when, when should we have the, the, the sectional championship? I think some sections do at the beginning of the year, some do at the end. What's your feeling on injuries? Do we need to have a, a, a sectional state and a state championship? What's your position on that? Uh, well, that's certainly a, a big a big conversation every year. I mean, with the fact that we finally got a, you know, a Dumi championship in Suffolk County, I think it's great for the sport. It's great for spectators because it's not just sitting all day to watch one kid wrestle. You go watch a whole team. Uh, I think it's the state Dumi championships is, imp is important. I, I think timing wise, it's, it's very difficult because these days our, our schedule is so jammed in. Like we're starting league matches before Christmas, you know, in, in December we do like last year, we had three league matches before the end of December or before Christmas. So it was like, you know, we're jamming everything in just so we can get to that dual meet championship. So maybe if there were some uh, some leeway in the schedule, or you can lengthen it, or something, it would make it a lot easier. As far as injuries, I don't, I haven't heard of anyone that's gotten injured in the last few years since it started to took took them out of postseason. So I don't, I know it's always a concern at the end of the season that you're getting your kids too much time on the mat and and not preparing for the individual tournaments, but. Then again, it also could be a benefic benefit to some kids that they are, they are getting that that high level competition before they get to the, the sectionals and states. You know, so um, I am for it. You know, I think it's a great thing for the sport. Do you see that you're going to be, um, you know, changing your approach to uh, spring and summer wrestling moving into this year because we've lost so much of the past year? Um, do you, do you foresee you, you know, doing uh, a more strenuous um, summer camp schedule or, or anything like that? Or do you guys think that you're just going to stick to uh, stick to the straight and narrow what you do, consistency of, you know, the normal practice schedule in the spring and the summer? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I, you know, in my mind, I want to go full blown off season for these kids. The ones, the ones that are juniors are going to be seniors next year. Give mm -hmm. that out, them that opportunity to prepare for next season. Uh, and maybe some seniors that want to wrestle freestyle just to get back on the mat and feel it again. So I, I'd like to go full blown like four nights a week, but I don't even know if we're going to be allowed in our, in our high school room yet. So that's a, 
that's a big question mark. Uh, and if we can get them into clubs and I go go to the club with them and work with them and whoever else is there, I'll be glad to to help out. You know, you know. Where do you think that Coach Pesco is in, you know, five years? Are you still coaching? Are you retiring? How much do you have a, a, a two, three, five-year plan? Uh, I'm not done yet, Mike. You know, sure. I, I think years ago it was, uh, it was a question mark. And, you know, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy watching a kid grow from, you know, insecure, non-athletic kid to being confident and, Put together and leaving as a senior with some some dignity and you know mm. self-respect and confidence and and sure of himself going out into the world you know so i still enjoy that i love to see kids who want to commit to the sport and work hard and and watch them excel to to a level that i never thought they'd be at coach i'm so. going to put you on the spot a, a little bit um you know, you've been at the helm, I think, uh, for the Golden Flash since around 95, 96, and I'd be off by a year. What, if you had to think back as, from a dual meet perspective, what's, what's the, and you've had a lot of them, right? What's the biggest win that you've had? Tell us about that experience. Oh, geez. Biggest win. You'd be better at remembering that stuff than me, Mike. I don't remember all of our wins. Like, uh, what you're talking about a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'd say that had to have been, um, one or two at UE duels. Um, we beat Brentwood for the first time ever uh, two years ago, or was it last year? I can't remember with the COVID, but uh, um, you know there, that happens. There's been uh, there's been a few good ones, but I you know if you have one in mind, you can share it with me. <laughs> no, listen, I I. I... What wanted your perspective? I mean, listen, anytime you beat Brentwood in any sport, especially wrestling, you know, that was a, that was certainly a big win. I, I, and I was happy for, for the golden flashes, but you know, my point was, you know, um, in a lot of different eras and, you know, multiple decades, you know, we talked about the evolution and change. I think candidly you've had, you know, you've had big wins, you know, throughout your entire career. So I, I think it's important. I, you know, it's again a little loaded question. It's difficult to answer, but you know, there's been a, a lot of a lot of victory. So well, I, I have to say, one sticks out. '96, I think it was my first year as head as varsity coach. It was uh, North Babylon in the Sable Gym, and it was a bloodbath. And it was a tie. We tied for the league title that year with them. I think it was a tie match, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, that was just I had like three kids go to the hospital getting stitches. <laughs> It was, it was literally a bloodbath. <laughs> so. so, you know, Coach, we're running out of time. I know Mike had an, another question. I'm going to wrap up for you, too. Um, no, I just I, – I think that I have, you know, everything that um, I need to get out of me. I, I, I believe that it's, you know, just kind of letting the audience at, at home know that, um, you know, your reputation, you're, you're a very humble, quiet man. Um, your accolades – uh, if they didn't know you, um, you know, that's why you have Mike Vetrano, uh, is so we can have somebody scream and yell all the good things that, that you've done. Um, but, you know, uh, one of my, my slogans in life is consistency is paramount. Uh, when I think about you, Coach Pesco, um, you know, you've been consistent at Sayville. Like I said, it's, it's the Mayberry of Long Island, one of the best towns around. Uh, I know a number of athletes that have graduated that wrestled under you. Um, they're all great men. Uh, they speak, you know, extremely highly of you and talk about the foundational, um, you know, uh, setting that you've, that you've given them. So it's good to hear that you're going to be around for another five, ten years coaching. And, and we'll see if you can deal with, with Mike, if he, uh, and how much he's going to be sporting that Sayville shirt. And, uh, <laughs> oh, Still you fits know, you, Mike. I appreciate, I appreciate that, Toriero. I appreciate that a lot. It means a lot what you said. Coach, we have a minute to go. One thing I want to talk to you about, it's non-wrestling, is I know that the Pesco family recently embarked on a small business. It's a form of an ice cream shop. I believe it's in Patchog on Long Island in New York. Tell us a little bit about that real quick. Sure. It's my oldest son, Matt. He, uh, him and his, his um, soon-to-be wife uh, started an ice cream shop. It's, uh, it's just a different concept. You take your favorite cereal, uh, you infuse it, the machine infuses it into the ice cream. It makes a hard scoop into soft serve. Uh, it's out of this world. It, you can have 
have a shake, ice cream, toppings on it. You can put your same cereal as a topping. They have uh, special boards that are unbelievable, and they're they're doing really well. I'm real proud of him for the hard work that he did to get there. Real quick, what's, what's the name called? of that coach? Called Cloud Nine Ice Cream and Cereal Bar, Patchogue, New York. All right, folks, get your Cloud Nine ice cream and cereal bar. I've certainly I've heard about it. I've been there. It, it's definitely awesome. That's in Patrick Island. Island. Coach, we appreciate your time. Uh, go Golden Flashes, and obviously we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Coach Pesco, maybe you can introduce both these handsome guys right now, and uh, we can hear about them. Sure. Uh, we have Mac Murtha. He's uh, He's been with us since seventh grade. He brought him up to varsity level. Uh, he's just done an outstanding job. You could see his uh, – Accolades, three-time World League. He was league champ last year in League Six, most outstanding wrestler of the of the tournament. He finished third in Suffolk County last year, which was outstanding after losing in the quarterfinals. Tough, close match to the Hot Pot Kid. And um, he showed a lot of heart coming back, taking third. And then uh, Yordal Rivera, he uh, started a little late in the game. He, didn't, he brought him up in eighth grade and took was going to take off his ninth grade year to go play basketball, but... Uh, some something changed his mind, and he's just been full force wrestling now. Uh, league finalist his ninth grade year. Uh, last year he took third in the league, but he was uh, won his quarter. Uh, he lost in the quarterfinals. He won his first round match against the top thir uh, the third seeded kid from Rocky Point last year. Um, just an outstanding kid, and he's putting the time in now. He's going to be something to reckon with next year. So we're looking forward to having these two back. All right. Well, let's 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 talk about a, a couple of things. How well do you two boys know Coach Petrano, Mike Petrano? You know, is there any any stories? Uh, do you know? Do they know him at all, Coach Pesco? Anything that we can, uh, we Mac know, can pull out? I know Mac knows him well because he uh, he went on a little kid circuit with uh, Mike's younger with Mike's son as well. So they traveled a little bit together. You got any stories about him, Mac? Oh, uh, not really. Our dads are just uh, good mm -hmm. friends, and I'm friends with his son too. So. Yeah. All right. Well, we won't pull any dirt out of out of the kind of <laughs> while he, while he's not here. Now, which one of you boys is class president? That's me. All right. Let's talk about you know some things away from wrestling because obviously you wrestled. Um, you know your accolades speak for themselves. By the way, Mac third in 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 uh, you know any significant tournaments is as good as winning it. Uh, it takes a lot of hard courage and determination to come back. Uh, and as far as you, Mr. Rivera, you know starting the sport late. Um, you know, going through the lumps, putting on, uh, you know, a piece of lycra in front of your peers uh, takes a lot of courage, um, you know, uh, to, to do that, you know, especially on Long Island where kids are learning to wrestle, you know, kind of right out of the womb. But tell me a little bit about, you know, to become class president, you got to have a lot of confidence. Has wrestling helped you um, have the confidence to go and take on such a role? And, and, and why are you, um, you know, what's the impetus to you being class president? What are you trying to change at the school or, or trying to get done? Um, yeah, I say wrestling has helped me like a lot with like confidence and also just like the mental mindset of it. Um, like since I've started in high school, it's just like, it's the, the aspect that like I really love about it is that like, like you have a goal, like you write down your goals and then like, it helps you achieve them. Like my goal is to, uh, go to West Point and I want to also wrestle mm -hmm. there, but I know that's gonna, that's gonna take a lot. So I might just do like walk on there, but I've been uh, trying to go for class president, like keeping my grades up while also trying to get my wrestling accolades up for West Point. So yeah, unbelievable. You know, we believe a lot in the, uh, the academies, you know, they're, they're doing some significant things with wrestling and obviously, um, you know, what it does for you post um, college is, is, you know, quite uh, impressive. Uh, you know, we got Mac over there. We got Saturday for the boys. It looks like, uh, you know, Brofest, California, Sayville to the core. Mike Cox, uh, shout out to the Note Brothers. I think I can keep going and keep going. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about, um, you know, your what year are you right now, Mac? I'm a junior. You're a junior. Okay, so you you didn't get an opportunity to wrestle this year in a in a totally competitive season, um, but you started to taste, you know, winning that Suffolk County title, which is you know, a significant thing that you can carry for the rest of your life. Uh, you know, wrestling, uh, winning a, a title, placing in Suffolk County um, would allow you to really go ahead and, and, and wrestle further in college. Tell me a little bit about what your plan is moving into next year. 
and then give me a three, five year of if you plan on wrestling or if you're just going to go to community college and, and surf off Fire Island for the rest of the days. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, my goal for next year is that way to win the counties and maybe place in the state. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to wrestle in college because I've also played football and baseball. So I'm thinking okay. about college. Now, is it your brother's the one that plays baseball at, at Notre Dame? Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And how's your ba- how are you at baseball? Are you pretty good with hand-eye coordination? Yeah, I'm a center fielder. Okay. And do you think that you want to play baseball in, in college? Uh, either football or baseball. I'm not really sure yet. Okay. And um, talk to me a little bit about what your training regimen is, you know, right now. I, I think that um, I'd like to rephrase if I, if I was able to. I, I would tell you to rephrase that, that placing of the state tournament to going and winning it. Uh, you know, the, the most difficult thing is going to be winning a Suffolk County title. Um, you know, but if you're able to accomplish that feat, which you're very, very close out, you're scratching, you know, um, placing in the state tournament uh, would be a, um, that would be a failure after winning a Suffolk County title. Um, so what are you doing right now um, as far as your, your training and your wrestling? Is there much wrestling going on? Are you finding some off season? Um, or do you find that you're, you know, busy in with your other sports? Yeah, I mean, uh, I got football and uh, uh, baseball for like the rest of the year until June. Yeah, I might okay. think about off season this season, this summer, but uh, I'm not sure yet. Well, you sound like there was a, a very famous uh, state champion from Long Beach who was um, unbelievable at wrestling. And we'd be like, I think his name was Matt something or other. He was so good. And be like, you don't want to wrestle? And he's like, I'm a, I'm a three-time All-American lacrosse. I just happen to be a, a fantastic athlete that wrestles. So, um, you know, it's good to hear that you are, you know, have some success on uh, some, some other ventures. Sport is perfect. It can get you a lot of places. Um, you know, with the idea, Mr. Rivera, of, of West Point, um, you know, are you – um, what are you thinking in terms of you want to go there? Do you want to have a lifetime in the military? What's the motivation to want to go into West Point? Um, so I went there in ninth grade for a wrestling camp and I kind of just like fell in love with the campus and also just like the lifestyle of it. So um, I don't really know yet, like, because you, you can't really tell until you've actually been there, like to see if you want to keep that as like a career or be out of it after like eight years. So I don't really know yet for that but um ever since like I, I came so I w- I came here when I was six years old from a different country and like I've always like want, wanted to like just like I don't know like I I'm, I feel like America is like a, this great country and I always feel like I have to like want to give back and joining the military and like fighting for this country would like be one of like a great uh representation of that did you come from Jamaica? I see some Bob Marley in the background there and, you know, a bunch no, of medals. No, I, just, I just like Bob Marley, but I, I came from Africa. Okay, what country in Africa? Ethiopia. Okay. I coached in New York City for a lot, and there was a high school. It's still there. It's called Brooklyn International High School, and it was uh, 90% kids from, uh, from Africa. So we had a lot of uh, Senegalese um, and, you know, just different, different countries from over there, and it was uh, – you know, a very interesting group of, um, of young kids, you know, who had that background that then came to New York. Uh, well, look, guys, we, we're happy to have you in. You know, Sayville, in my personal experience, is a long story program of some really significant wrestling and some really significant sport, uh, for that matter. You guys have, you know, it, it might be the, the best little town on Long Island um, where you guys are. It's kind of like Mayberry. You know, I hope that you're... you're <laughs> It really is. Um, you know, I hope that you guys, you know, thank your mothers and your fathers and your, your guardians and, and everybody that's, um, you know, kind of giving you that place in, in the world because it's beautiful. Uh, I'd also, you know, tell you to go thank Coach Pesco and, uh, you know, everybody else over there because, you know, what you're involved with at Sayville Wrestling is uh, it's quite significant. You guys have, you know, quite an alumni base. And for Coach Pesco to pick you two guys, um, to come on the show and talk about it. It's, you know, it's quite an accomplishment. So you, so you should feel proud uh, about that. Um, you know, the last part is we're going to be rooting for you. You know, uh, whether you're on the baseball dime in the football field um, or, you know, fighting for your position at, at West Point. Um, you know, there's a lot of people 
um, from what Vitrano tells me that watch this show. So, um, you know, I just wanted to let you know that we are cheering for you. We have your name in our database and we're going to be following you for the rest of our lives. Um, you know, and hope that you, uh, you know, keep working hard. If there's anything that Coach Petrano and myself can do for the Sable program, we'll get, you know, Mike on, uh, on the whipping stick and, and get moving, Coach Pesco. Thank you, Mr. Torriero. <laughs> well said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, well, guys, look, thanks for coming in very much, representing Sayville, and uh, we'll be sharing for you. Thank you. Thank for you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.